Hi and welcome back to Crochet for Absolute Beginners by me on fullcupwellness.com. Um, you can go to the fullcupwellness.com for more crochet tutorials but today I want to show you the basic tools you need to begin crocheting. So first up number one consideration is the yarn. You can choose different thicknesses of yarn depending on what project you want to make. I like to use this really thin yellow cotton. This is a, I think it's a two ply, two ply cotton to make really small bees. Um, but there's also this super chunky, I don't know what ply this is, but it's super chunky yarn and it's used for making chunky blankets and beanies and scarves and shawls. And your crochet hook size will depend on your yarn size. More, more about that later. Um, so other than the thickness or ply of the yarn, which will be, there are some term, there are some terms that I'm not very good at with the conversion of the terminology. But like two ply yarn is called sock weight or fingering weight or something, and you've got chunky 12 ply super chunky <laughs> yarn but there are conversion charts online so if you're buying yarn online you can see the difference between the different thicknesses and what you might need for different projects the second consideration when choosing your yarn is um, the, des the desired outcome or feel of the product project so if you want to make a soft fluffy chunky blanket you choose this soft merino this is merino um i normally go for cruelty free yarns animal free products vegan yarns i guess you call them um because merino wool isn't uh, isn't ethical <sighs> i don't need to go into that right now but if you want to know more about the ethical qualities of different yarn types that you might be coming across in your crochet journey, um, I recommend watching the documentary Dominion, which is free on YouTube. Um, search Dominion documentary and you'll find it. Uh, that's re that really opened my eyes up to how, um, how Merino sheep are treated and cashmere and Angora rabbits and all that. Like That brings me to my third point, my ethical, the, the ethical choices of your yarn. But I haven't finished my second point yet because I'm rambling. Um, so you can either make, <laughs> so you can either find soft yarn to make something soft and warm, or for example, you can get scrubby hemp yarn to make pot scrubbers or washcloths for your bathroom and kitchen, which I like to make. I also came across nettle yarn, which seems really interesting. So like like hemp yarn but a little bit more expensive <laughs> um back to the type of yarn the ethical quality of your yarn now this one is a cotton yarn and i understand that cotton isn't 100 percent ethical either but i weigh up my choices between like angora wool and cotton for example, angora rabbits need their fur to survive winter time, and if they're plucked, live plucking happens, and their fur just gets ripped. Out. You have to watch this Dominion documentary seriously; it's eye-opening. They showed the rabbits just being just plucked, and their fur gets turned into yarn, and then they're shivering and suffering all through winter, and then any of the ones that survive end up getting happened to them too. Same with cashmere goats. Oh, can't buy cashmere anymore. That was a lovely yarn to work with, but not ethical. So here's, this is a chunky cotton, which is really nice to work with. It's so soft, it's really nice. I like it a lot. Um, so the next tool you'll need, other than your yarn, is um, a crochet hook. 
So this is a 10 mil crochet hook. They come in millimetre sizes or there are hook sizes American versus UK, Australia and then there are online conversion charts you can use. But I always go by the, the millimetre size. So I'd use this 10 mil hook for this nice chunk of cotton yarn <laughs> dropped it all over the place. Um, and an even bigger hook for this really chunky, chunky yarn. Whereas this tiny little two ply yarn, I will use two and a half mil hook. Whoop, where's the thing? <laughs> there, where, can you see it? It's not focused. But basically, compared to this, what's this one? Seven mil hook, you end up with a nice small, nice small stitches. We've got a nice sunshine coming in through the window at the moment. It's gorgeous. So it's making me sweat. Got a sweat moustache, glistening moustache. <laughs> um, okay, so your crochet hook, you can either get it like, this one's a bamboo one. Um, it's got just a little notch on the handle to ergonomically grip it. Or I've got my soft grip handle ergonomic style crochet hooks. Um, they, these are my go-to, like either natural fibres or the metal ones with the, the grip. But while you're looking for crochet hooks to purchase, you might come across Tunisian crochet, which is a cross between crochet and knitting. So you've got one big knitting needle with a crochet hook at the end, and your stitches basically just stay on on the, the on the crochet hook, Tunisian crochet hook. Um, that's a whole other technique. Don't worry about that. But basically, if you see one of these, it's a, it's a Tunisian crochet hook. It doesn't have a handle and it's elongated a little bit. That's Tunisian crochet. Different technique to crochet, slightly, but still easy and and I, I really want to pick it up soon. So. Maybe I can teach you guys to do that as well. Anyway, moving on. The third thing you're going to need when you start a crochet project, when you very beginner crochet starting out, is stitch markers. Now, a stitch marker is just a little thing you can put in to the first stitch of the round or the last stitch of the row or first stitch of your row. Wherever you want to mark, just remember where you've which stitch you've marked, um, and these aren't one hundred percent necessary for working in rows. But when you're working in the round, you definitely want a stitch marker. Otherwise, you're going to lose count of where you're up to, and you're going to end up with wonky circles. See my previous um, video on continuing crocheting in the round for information on how to use a stitch marker and count the rows properly, uh, the stitches properly. So you can make a nice flat circle. Um, so the oh, you don't have to you don't have to buy a stitch marker. You can make your own stitch marker. All it takes is a piece of yarn in a different colour to the one you're working with. That can that is obviously not this one because that won't fit within a tiny little stitch. So a little piece of yarn for the, to fit in a little stitch. Or big stitch. As long as it's a different colour to the yarn you're working with you'll be able to identify which is the marked stitch. Um, you might also want a row counter. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Basically it just increases the numbers for you. You just push it and count your rows. Now you're only going to need this if you're doing a big long complicated pattern or you have a lot of rows to keep track of. Um, so you, yeah, you might not need it until later. So while you're just starting out, just recap, you'll need your a yarn, depending on your project type, a crochet hook that is dependent on your yarn size. Oh, right, yes, okay, so I can show you. If you've got this really thick hook, 
you're trying to hook with a really thin yarn, it's going to make really big wide stitches, but it's not going to be as easy to hook with if you're not matching up the sizes with your yarn and your, your um, hook. Um, the final thing, wait, you need, oh sorry, hold on, let me recap properly. Okay, so yarn, hook, stitch markers, and row counter. And the fourth thing you need is either a pattern or your own imagination. There are thousands, millions, probably even bajillions of free crochet patterns online. Um, there are paid ones as well, depending on if you want to try your hand at something a bit more snazzy. Um, there are heaps of crocheters out there who have put their, their work up and you can give it a go. Um, reading a crochet pattern is only difficult if you don't know the abbreviations, but most of the patterns will show you, will tell you the abbreviations. And then any of those steps, you can easily Google it or ask me. Um, if you're having trouble with any of your patterns, we send me a, a message and see if we can talk it through together, figure it out. Um, otherwise, I just try to find a nice forum, a crochet forum, and search for my search terms. Now, if you're going to be making a pattern by yourself, um, you've got to keep in mind the size um, and dimensions of your project, and you want to make a tension square. Now, I don't think I've mentioned one of these before, but a tension square, or, uh, okay, so a tension square will show you how many stitches of a particular wool plus a particular hook put, like, how much you put in 10 or 15 centimetres of stitches. So that you can use that measurement to work out how many stitches you'll need to make, for example, a t-shirt and how wide you want that t-shirt to get. Um, so it takes a little bit of planning, but it's all worth it. Um, the tension is called gauge in the US. So if you haven't heard the word tension, you might have heard the word gauge. But it's basically legit just how much, how many stitches will fit within a certain a me measurement. So I don't know how to explain it without showing diagrams. Uh, I don't even have a tension square to show you. I'm too lazy and I don't even make them. But if you don't do a tension square before you start your work and you just jump into it like I do, you waste hours. Hours of time. Because a few hours will pass and you'll realise, oh, I've put not enough stitches at the start and now everything's just too short. My t-shirt's this wide instead of this wide or something and you have to start again. <sighs> so <laughs> save time by making a tension square. Um, I think I've, I've put some information about tension squares on my website. So check out my latest post on my website. And before you go to my website, don't forget to hit the subscribe button wherever it is. <laughs> um, and thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye.